Hello everyone, this is Monica Lupion, your instructor in the course Heat and Mass Transfer. Today I'm going to go over the differential equations of mass transfer. Uh, we're going to follow the same structure as in the case of heat transfer, if you remember when we defined the differential equations governing heat transfer. In this case, we're going to apply the differential equations of the case of mass transfer. Okay, this is the concept of my presentation. I will give you first a brief introduction about the general equation of mass transfer. And I'm, we're gonna base the general equation of mass transfer in something on something that we already know. We're gonna follow the same methodology and in the case of heat transfer um, that we also uh, based on the development of the general equation of momentum transfer. And then we're gonna go over the common boundary conditions. You will see that, well, in order to be able to solve a uh, uh, differential equation, no matter what, no matter if it's mass transfer or, or heat transfer, you need to define the boundary conditions in order to uh, be able to determine the value of the constants from the integration process. And this is usually very tricky. Most of the students, um, they understand the general equation of mass transfer, but the Formulation of the boundary conditions are, is always very tricky. So I'll try to give you some examples of boundary, uh, common boundary conditions. In the case of the mass transfer, we're gonna see if we have a constant concentration of the element A at the boundary surface. If there is a reaction happening over the, the surface, the boundary surface, if the molar flux of the element A is zero at a uh, the boundary surface, or if there is a center line, we're going to be able to use or to apply symmetry. And when there is a convective mass transfer flux at the boundary surface. So those are the four situations that we're going to discuss in class today in this video. In addition to that, uh, when we solve the different problems in this course, I will also mention, I will also uh, try to explain, hopefully clear enough, how to formulate some other boundary conditions, okay? And finally, I'm gonna spend a few minutes talking about the general approach of the general strategy on how to solve molecular diffusion problems. Okay, so let's go. If you remember when we studied the momentum transfer, um, this is a general equation. Well, this is out of the scope of this course, but this is something that you, you learned in previous courses when you studied the momentum transfer or more specifically in this course when we discuss the general equation of heat transfer depending on the type of coordinate this is cartesian coordinate cylindrical and spherical this is how the general equation was formulated so the variation of the temperature with time was equal to the uh, contribution of the gradient of the temperature with the position and uh, there was an additional term related to the generation of heat in the case of mass transfer, as I mentioned, we're going to follow the same methodology. I'm not going to go over all the details. Um, if you're curious, you should be able to see how the different steps to get to the general equation of mass transfer. If you take a look to your textbook, there is some further information here. I'm not concerned that much how you get the general equation. I'm more concerned that you learn how to apply this general equation. Okay, and this is what I'm going to focus my presentation today and also the problems that are available in this course. So the general equation for mass transfer, you can see the similarities from heat transfer. So we have the dependence of the concentration in this case with time uh, is equal to the a term uh, of the molar flux as a function of the uh, position. And there is a new term here that is related to the chemical production of the volume A. So every time we formulate a general equation and differential equation, of course, we need to define a control volume. In this case, this equation will be applied over this particular control volume. Okay, so I repeat, we have three different terms here similar to the general equation for heat transfer. So the net rate of mass flux of the element A in the control volume 
plus the net rate of accumulation of A or how the concentration of A uh, changes with time within the control volume. And there is a third term, which is related to the rate of chemical production of A within the control volume. And this is equal to zero. This is a general equation for mass transfer. If you want to express this general equation in the different coordinates, you have here Cartesian coordinates, cylindrical coordinates, and spherical coordinates. Usually, we only consider one dimension. So in the case of Cartesian, we can ignore these two terms. In the case of cylindrical, usually, well, this is tricky if the, uh, in the case of cylindrical, if the um, mass transfer is happening gradually, so as a function of the radius, we have to consider these and this other one the, will be cancelled. If we are consider the variation of the mass transfer over the axis of the cylinder in that, in that case, this term will be cancer and we will consider the variation of the concentration uh, over the axis of the cylinder. In the case of extra spherical coordinates, um, well, similar discussion here, but usually we are not going to consider these two terms and only consider the radial variation of the concentration or the molar flux. Okay? Okay, so in mass transfer, when we focus on molecular diffusion, okay, we are going to apply the fixed rate equation that we're already familiar with. And we can also apply this general equation that I just explained. Actually, this is the strategy that, you, that we're gonna follow to solve um, mass transfer problems when it comes to molecular diffusion. Okay, remember that there were there are two different modes, transport mode. One is molecular diffusion, which is the focus of my presentation today, and second is the um, convective mass transfer. Okay, so we're gonna study this convective mass transfer in the next lectures, but today we're going to focus on molecular diffusion. That's why we are considering this fixed rate equation. So when we combine the conservative equation of the general equation and the fixed rate equation or constitutive equation, that's a, another name that it receives, and we, we, we're going to combine these two, well, we're going to try to simplify these equations even farther, so the solution, the mathematical solution will be easier, plus the boundary conditions, okay, we're going to get to the solution of the mass transfer problem. And we're going to apply the same methodology always. We're going to combine the general equation, the one in blue, the constitutive equation or the fixed rate equation, the one in red, we're going to combine these two, we're going to apply some simplifications, uh, we're going to apply some assumptions, and therefore we're going to try to simplify the equations, and we're going to apply boundary conditions and sometimes initial conditions if there is dependent with time in order to reach a solution. Okay? Okay. So let's see how we can simplify um, these equations. As I mentioned, uh, we're going to assume a few facts in order to simplify this equation. I'm gonna begin with the general equation. Let's see how we can simplify um, the mathematical, the analytical solution of this um, general equation. So this is a general equation for mass transfer, okay? We just discussed about this. So when the diffusion coefficient is constant, and when we combine these two equations, okay, the general equation will be transformed into this one. So this is the general equation of the mass transfer process 
when the diffusion coefficient is constant. Let's go a little bit further. Let's assume that it's constant and that there is no chemical production. So the term Ra is equal to zero. We can cancel um, this term here, okay? Uh, we can play around with the terms of the general equation and this will be the result of the equation, of the differential equation. So the dependence of the concentration with time will be equal to the constant convective, uh, constant diffusion coefficient, sorry, times the Laplace of the concentration. If you remember when we study heat transfer, we also got a very similar equation um, when we consider that there was no heat generation, which is this. In this case, the parameter is the temperature. In the case of mass transfer, of course, the parameter is the concentration. But you see the similarities between these two expressions. Okay. Another simplification that we can, we can use. When there is no fluid motion, when the bulk contribution in the fixed uh, rate equation is zero, okay, when the convective, the, not convective, sorry, the diffusion coefficient is constant and there is no chemical production, we apply uh, this and, uh, well, in the general equation, this will be equal to zero. And when we apply the fixed uh, rate equation, we only have to consider the first term because the second one will be cancelled. So let me go back a couple of slides. So what I'm saying is that when there is no bulk motion, when there is no contribution of this second term here, we can directly uh, replace the molar flux of Na, of the element A, in the general equation. We also know that the, diam the, the diffusion coefficient is constant. And as a result, and also where we, we also apply the simplification that there is no chemical production. So when you combine these two equations with the assumptions that I just mentioned, this is the simplified general equation that, that we get. And this is called the fixed second law of diffusion, okay? And you can, of course, express this general equation in Cartesian coordinates, cylindrical coordinates, <clears throat> excuse me, and spherical coordinates. And the same way you can simplify if you consider only one dimension, you can cancel, for example, these two terms, okay? Okay, and um, yes, uh, this is the equivalence or the similar expression that we study when we did the analysis over heat transfer. You can see the similarities are very obvious. Again, heat transfer is a function of the temperature while mass transfer is a function of the concentration. Okay? Okay. So um, just to refresh your memory, the fixed rate uh, equation when there is no bulk motion, as I mentioned, we forget about, we don't have to consider about this second term. And this is expressed as a function of our, our Cartesian coordinate, cylindrical coordinate, and spherical coordinate. This is just to refresh your memory. Okay. One more. Um, yeah, let me go. One more simplification. When we consider on top of that, that there is no dependence with time, that is, that there is no flow motion, so we don't have to consider the second term in the fixed rate equation. When the diffusion coefficient is constant, when there is no chemical production, that is, that the parameter Ra is equal to zero. And on top of that, if we consider that there is no dependence with time, let me go back. So here we consider that there is no dependence with time. So this will be equal to zero. So we can also cancel the uh, convective coefficient, uh, the diffusion coefficient. Okay. 
And this is the Laplace equation in terms of molar concentration. Very, very similar to the equation that we also study in heat transfer for the, when we have uh, the Laplace equation in terms of the temperature. So if we have all these assumptions, if we can take all these assumptions, there is no dependence with time, there is no fluid motion, or the, or the, the system is very diluted, when the uh, diffusion coefficient is constant and when there is no chemical production, this is the simplified general equation, the Laplace equation in terms of molar concentration. Okay? Okay, and well, we're going to see some examples how to apply the different assumptions. But now let's move to the common boundary conditions. So the first one, when we have an interface and we can have interface between a liquid and a gas, an interface uh, between um, dissolved liquid um, in a solvent in uh, equilibrium with a gas, we can have a solid in equilibrium with a solvent, we can have a solid in equilibrium with the gas. So depending on what type of uh, system we have, we can apply equilibrium at interface. And we're gonna see this, especially uh, when we study the heat transfer equipment, we're gonna see how we're gonna apply the equilibrium at the interface. So I'm not gonna talk a lot about this because this is a very particular case. And we're gonna talk about this in much more detail when it comes to the last lecture, um, mass transfer equipment, okay? What happens if there is a chemical reaction? For example, if we have um, uh, catalytic material, the main goal of the catalyst is to promote a chemical reaction. So every time I say catalytic surface, there is a chemical reaction involved. So let's imagine that there is a, a catalytic particle, for example, this one, a small particle of a catalyst material, catalytic material. Um, uh, there is a chemical reaction happening. So the element A uh, gets into the, over the surface and there is a chemical reaction happening. And as a result, A is being converted into B. So this is a very simple example, right? So A is converted into B. In this case, uh, what we can, as a boundary condition, we can use the molar flux of the element A as a function of the chemical reaction happening, as a function of the kinetics. So depending on how this reaction is being defined, Usually a reaction, depending on the order of the reaction, but we'll see that the ratio can be something like uh, a constant Kc times the concentration, okay? But again, depending on the order, uh, we're going to find different forms to calculate or to express this chemical reaction happening over the surface of the catalyst. Um, Usually what, we, as, what we're going to assume as, is that once the particle A reaches the surface of the catalyst, 100% of all the particles reaching the surface will be converted into the element B. Okay, so we're going to assume that all the species A at the catalytic surface uh, will be depleted. Again, I know this is hard to understand. It's probably better if we see an example, okay? And actually there is a very good example about catalytic reactions and how to deal with the general equation when we have uh, a catalytic surface. Okay, another boundary condition that we can, we can get or we can find. When there is a symmetry, uh, for example, in this case, if our system, the origin of our system is located in the center, we can apply uh, symmetry. And we know that in the case of uh, concentration, how, the, how is the concentration profile? It will be something like this. Let's, let's assume that this is a maximum point at the center, it could be also a minimum point. But if we apply the mathematical concept or the mathematical definition of a maximum or of a minimum, 
this this the differential equation. So the derivation of the concentration with zeta evaluated at the center has to be equal to zero. Okay, and the same if we have if we have an impermeable wall to the element A, this is equivalent as to consider that there is another piece. Okay, and this the wall will be in the center, okay, and for symmetry we can apply the same boundary conditions. Okay, again, we're going to discuss this in more detail using an example. Another boundary condition. If the problem says that there is convective mass transfer happening over the surface of a control volume, then, well, we studied this in more detail in the lecture about convective mass transfer. But nevertheless, this is a general equation for convective mass transfer, so the molar flux of the element A is equal to a coefficient that is called convective mass transfer coefficient times delta C, delta concentration. This is similar when we have Q over A. If you remember, this is equal to the convective heat transfer coefficient times delta T. So in the case of convective mass transfer, the role of the convective H will be played by this convection mass transfer coefficient. And as always, a driving force in the case of heat transfer is a temperature. In the case of mass transfer is the concentration. OK, but we'll talk more about this when we discuss convective mass transfer. There is a, a lecture dedicated to this. OK. So we went over the general equation of mass transfer already. We also discussed, at least globally, what are the most common boundary conditions that you can find in the problems. Let's now spend a few minutes discussing how to solve molecular diffusion problems. OK. So my recommendation will be first draw a diagram of the physical system and labeling important features and important information. Well, temperature, if there is a catalyst reaction, if there is an impermeable wall, anything that it could be important to that can have an effect in the equations. Then you need to make a list of different assumptions. And for the exam, this is very important uh, because if you just put an equation without any indication of the assumptions, and if the equation is not correct, you will get a zero, okay? But if you make a li uh, the list on assumptions and you go from the general to the particle case of the, of the equations, you know, and, and it's clear that you were taking all the assumptions into consideration, even if you make a mistake, assuming some uh, simplifications, but then you will get some points. But if you just put your equation without any further explanation, you don't get you won't get any points okay so it's important to indicate the list of assumptions that you made then of course you have to pick the coordinate system we normally use either cartesian or, or cylindrical okay it's very good not that much uh, although we also we will, uh, we will also see i think at least one example when uh, there is a spherical particle and once you have the equation formulated and with the simplifications included, then you need to define and apply the boundary conditions and the initial conditions. And this is what it's really important to me. OK, so if you then you're not able to solve the differential equation or if you make a mistake solving the differential equation, but everything else is correct. If you pick the correct equation, if you apply the right assumptions, if you specify and apply the boundary conditions and the initial condition, but you made a mistake solving the differential equations, you will get most of the points. That's why I, you really need to put an emphasis on all the different points before getting to the point of solving the differential equation. Okay? 
Okay. So um, this is another example that I would like you to try. So consider a single porous spherical inert mineral particle. So we have a spherical mineral particle uh, with a, made of a porous material. And the pores inside the particle are filled with liquid water, which is the element B. We are interested in analyzing the molecular diffusion of the contaminant benzene. So benzene will be the element A within the water field pores of the particle. Benzene is not very soluble in water and doesn't absorb onto the intersurfaces of the pores. So it's a way to separate A from B. The process is isothermal at 290 Kelvin and the concentration of dissolved benzene in the water surrounding the particle is constant with time. So there is no variation with time. Okay, so this is a steady state. So we can assume that the concentration of the element, oops, of the element B, the element A with time is equal to zero. Okay. So starting with the general differential equation of mass transfer, you need to first develop a differential model to describe the concentration profile of benzene with, within the single porous spherical inert mineral particle. You need to state rational assumptions and boundary and initial conditions. The effective diffusion coefficient of benzene in the water field pores of the particle is represented by this term here. So you don't have to worry about getting the diffusion coefficient in this particular case when we have pores filled with liquid. Okay, so uh, try to solve, try to go over this example. The solution is posted, but I would like you to try first to see if you're able to pick the right equation and include the right assumptions and simplification. Okay, and this is all from my side. Thank you so much.